right now you want to get some images imported so that you can start editing them in Darktable. How do you do that? Well, you've come to the right place. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 154 of Understanding Darktable. So we've got our clean install of Darktable, but at the moment we've got no images in the library. We need to import some. Now there are two ways to import images into Darktable. One assumes that you've already got a folder on your hard drive where images live, and you simply want Darktable to be aware of that specific location. For that, we use this button, Add to Library. So that means add them where they currently exist. The other approach assumes that you've got images on a memory card that you want to mount to your system and then copy to a folder on your hard drive and then have Darktable reference those new copies. In other words, you don't want to reference the images on the memory card because the memory card's not always going to be mounted on your system, right? For that, we use copy and import. Now, between these two buttons, the interface that comes up is very similar, but there are some differences. For this example, I'm going to choose copy and import because I've got a memory card attached to my system that's got photos on it, and I want to copy those images to a folder on my hard drive and then have Darktable reference those images. Here in the top left corner we see places. You can add places with the plus key and these are hard drives or maybe memory cards that you just want to always appear in this import dialog box. But I want to look at this 32 gig volume which is the memory card I've attached and so down here in the folders section I can see the folder structure of that memory card. Under DCIM, I will find all of the date folders on which I shot photos on this particular memory card. We are going to import these images from the 20th of April. And at the moment, all images have been selected because none of these have been imported into this particular Darktable library. Down the bottom of the dialog box, you'll see select all, select none, select new. So if we go select none, now no images are selected. Up here in the top, we can see select only new images. Recursive directory comes in really handy when you're using the add to library option instead of the copy and import option. Because quite often you'll have a photo folder and then you'll have subfolders within that. Clicking recursive directory will tell Darktable, here's my parent folder where all my photos live, but they're all in subfolders. Just scan all the subfolders for all of my images and add them to the library. If you have a tendency to shoot RAW plus JPEG in camera, but you only want to import your RAW files, you can click on this button for ignore non-RAW images, and Darktable will simply import the RAW files only. Down the bottom here, you'll see import job with no underscore name. So that's kind of like if you want to apply a naming convention to this particular import job. It used to be called job code and I think that sort of implied that if you were a commercial shooter you might use a job code for shoots but maybe as an amateur you want to use a particular string of characters and or numerals to describe a particular shoot. Now, where it says naming rules, this is expandable with this little arrow on the right hand side. So we expand that and we can see some information like base film rolls directory. This is what's the parent folder that you want to copy all of your images into. For me, it's Bruce, my photos, photos folder, and then within that I have a folder for family photos. If we want to change that, we can click on the little folder icon here, point to a new folder if we wanted to say, I don't know, I'll chuck these into test shots, and that will now make the test shots folder the parent folder when I do this copy and import. But we then have the option 
with the film roll name to create a folder and file name hierarchy if we want to. So what I've got here, actually at this point I'm going to suggest you Google, although you don't have to because I'll put the link down below, but check out a page called Darktable Variables. This is within the Darktable manual. This particular page of the manual describes all the variables that we can use for renaming files, either at the import stage or at the export stage. So you'll see here that what I've done in my film role name is I've got XF year and then a forward slash because this is Linux, so it's forward slash. On Windows, it'd be a backslash. So I get a folder for the year, and then I've got exif year, hyphen, exif month, hyphen, exif day. So I end up with another folder that is year, month, day, and that is the folder into which these images will be imported. I also then check the box that says keep original file name because I don't want to rename my files. If you do want to rename them, uncheck that and under file naming pattern, again, you can use any of the variables that you find to create any kind of naming convention you like. So you can use plain text in combination with any of these variables to create exactly the type of naming convention that suits your way of thinking. You can then have the option to keep this window open. That might be handy if you need to import from multiple folders on your memory card, but you don't want to import the entire memory card by clicking on the DCIM folder. Keep this window open will simply keep the window open once this import has finished so that you could then go and grab another folder of images to import. All right, once you've done all of that, it will tell you at the bottom here how many images are going to be imported. I can then click copy and import and Darktable now starts importing. And because I chose to keep this window open, I've still got the window over the top here, but we can see that the images are being imported. And once the images have copied across, we will then see all of the images that we copied in thumbnail view in the middle of the light table interface. All right, that'll do it for this episode. In the next episode, we'll look at the Add to Library option. Questions, comments, sing out down below. I'll catch you in the next one.